Hello all, welcome to Let's Learn Optometry. In this video, we will see about hypermetropia. Hypermetropia is a refractive error in which the parallel rays of light coming from the infinity gets focused behind the retina when accommodation is at rest. So ideally in an emetropic eye with no refractive errors, the parallel light rays is focusing on the retina like here. But in hypermetropic eye, it focuses behind it. Types of hypermetropia. Basically, we divide the types based on four groups. So they are based on the etiology or the cause for the hypermetropia, clinical type, based on the effect of accommodation, based on the degree of refractive error. Let's see each type in detail. Etiological type. So in this category, we divide the hypermetropia based on what or how it is caused. It has five further types, axial, curvatural, index, absence of refractive element and consecutive hypermetropia. Axial hypermetropia, it is due to relatively shorter axial length of the eyeball. Like in this picture, hypermetropic eye is smaller than the normal one. The average axial length of the eyeball is around 22 to 24 mm. However, this value differs between different studies. So basically, 1 mm shortening of the axial length will cause 3 diopters of hypermetropia. Physiologically, majority of all infants are hypermetropic due to their shorter axial length of the globe. As the child grows, the eyeball also grows. So the hypermetropia gradually reduces and the eye becomes normal. This process is called emetropization. But pathologically, axial hypermetropy happens when the retina is pushed forward. Like in examples like uh, tumors or uh, retinal detachment on central serous retinopathy. Curvature hypermetropia, it occurs when the curvature of the cornea or lens is flatter than normal. An increase of 1 mm in its radius of curvature produces a hypermetropy of plus 6 diopters. Please keep in mind that increase in radius of curvature is synonymous with the flattening of the curvature. So for example, a comparing to a normal radius of curvature of cornea 7.8 mm, a patient with 8.8 .8 mm will have plus 6 diopter of hypermetropia. So as in this picture, the cornea is flatter than the normal one. Example, cornea plana. Index hypermetropia. When the refractive index of the media is less than normal, it is due to increase in the refractive index of the lens cortex comparing to the lens nucleus. This is often seen in elderly patients. At young age, the index of the cortex is lesser than the nucleus. And this inequality result in a formation of combination of a central lens surrounded by two converging meniscus lens. At old age, the index of the cortex increases, the lens becomes more homogeneous and acts as a single lens. So, the power of the lens as a whole decreases, creating a hypermetropic error. Absence of refractive element. The most common cause is aphakia, which means removal of the natural lens from the eye. As lens contributes majorly to the refraction, its absence may produce hypermetropia of up to or more than plus 10 diopters. Backward displacement of lens, it may occur congenitally or after a trauma. Consecutive hypermetropia, here hypermetropia occurs as a result of previous treatment procedure. For example, it occurs during surgical overcorrection of myopia after refractive surgery or undercorrected eye oil power after cataract surgery. Clinical types Congenital hypermetropia This is rare. It is usually associated with other anomalies like microphthalmus. Simple or developmental type It is the most common type. As we previously discussed, a newborn baby is hypermetropic but with age, the eyeball grows in size and the hypermetropia is gradually diminished. If the growth of the eyeball is retarded, then the hypermetropia will persist. Acquired hypermetropia. This is found in affective conditions commonly following extraction of the lens and dislocation of lens from the optical axis after a trauma. Functional hypermetropia. So paralysis of accommodation in patients with third nerve palsy and internal ophthalmoplegia. Based on the effect of accommodation. We already have a detailed video on this topic with easy examples also. 
so i will uh, give the link in the description so if you have not watched it please pause this video and watch that before we continue with the next type degree of refractive error up to plus 2 adapter is considered as low hypermetropia 2.25 to 5 is considered as moderate and more than 5.25 is considered as high hypermetropia symptoms of hypermetropia for an easy understanding i have categorized the symptoms based on the extent of the refractive error uh, young patient with up to one diopter of hypermetropia uh, they often correct it with their own accommodative effort and they will not have any asthenopia or blurred vision uh, we all know in a hypermetropic eye the focal point is behind the retina so this point can be brought to the retina by active exertion of the accommodation so the therefore the patient can see the distant object clearly by exerting accommodation so 1 to 2 adaptive hypermetropia here the patient has to be on sustained accommodative effort so they may develop symptoms of asthenopia like headache eye strain watering and photophobia these symptoms become worse as the day progresses or prolonged near work patients with 2 to 4 adaptive hypermetropia will exert all of the accommodative ability to see the distant object and nothing is left for the near vision so they will have uh, both blurred vision and asthenopic symptoms but the blurred vision will be more far near than for the distance more than four diopters these patients do not accommodate and they will have blurred vision for both distance and near with no asthenopia signs eyeball may appear smaller as a whole a scan reveals shorter axial length cornea may be may be slightly smaller or flatter as in cornea plana and the chamber is shallow so voluntary exertion of accommodation with convergence dissociate the muscle balance and produce convergent squint in children pseudomyopia so excessive accommodation may result in spasm of the ciliary muscle resulting in a myopic shift so this myopic shift will disappear under cycloplegia by relaxing the ciliary muscles fundoscopy fundoscopy reveals a small optic disc with a very small cup this margin becomes blurred with overcrowding of blood vessels sometimes termed as pseudopapillitis or pseudopapilledema choroidal folds may be present an increased reflex of retina named as short silk appearance is seen along with the crowding of nerve fiber layer complications recurrent styes and eye infections like blepharitis it occurs due to constant rubbing of the eyes to get relief from the eye strain and tiredness accommodative convergence squint amblyopia is common in high, in high hypermetropia premature presbyopia so as the age progresses obvious receding of the near point becomes apparent so it occurs earlier like before 40 in hyperope than emetrope hypermetropic individuals often have a shallow anterior chamber so they have increased chance of developing primary angle closure glaucoma treatment so complete cycloplegic refraction is mandatory before uh, treating the patient so optical correction can be given with the convex lens to bring the focus on the retina so contact lens can also be given surgeries like lasik pigback and eye oil implantation so we have certain guidelines and rules for the determination of uh, amount of hypermetropic correction so we will discuss that in detail in a separate video thanks for watching subscribe to let's learn optometry for more optometry and eye care videos